How to create an animated short using Doobidoof? Let's make an example. Hi, this is Gustav, the developer of Doobidoof. Welcome to our channel. In this video, I'm going to show you the main steps you have to follow to create your short animation projects using Doobidoof and getting a nice result. But this time, we are going to start from the end by watching a finished project made by our community's member, Jorge Andrade. So once again, hold on to your seat and enjoy his animation called Game Boy. Okay, now you just watch the final product. But how we did it? Well, let's go back in time and take a look at the procedure. First, planning. The first step to develop any animation project is planning. Before opening Tupitoof, you will need a pencil and a piece of paper to design the structure of the story you want to tell. Take a breath and visualize your animation. Then, split your story in several segments. Each of those segments will become a scene for your project. Now, how to know where to cut your story to define the end of a scene and the beginning of a new one? Well, there are two tips you should consider about it. First, one scene cannot be longer than a few seconds and it must show one specific action. Second, when the point of view of the camera changes in your mind, it's a good sign that a new scene has started. Now, the best way to define the plan of your animation project is creating a storyboard. But what's a storyboard? Well, it's a very similar to a comic strip. I mean, it's a sequence of drawings representing your story. In fact, every illustration represents one of your scenes. The great benefit of creating a storyboard is that it gives you a specific idea about the appearance and the size of your project. By knowing the exact number of scenes you will have to produce and the content of each one, you will be able to calculate how much time you will have to spend to finish the whole animation. Therefore, you can create a schedule including an approximate date of release. For example, if you have to create an animation for a school homework, you have to design a project that you actually can finish before the day you have to present it to your teacher. And this is an important lesson you have to care about. When you work on any animation project, you have to be very aware about how much time you will need to finish it before animating the first second. Remember, planning is one of the best practices as an animator. In the case of, for example, Jorge designed a story composed by six scenes. Introduction, the house zoom in, the room zoom in, kids face, the video game in action, and the kids celebrating. Ok, our plan is ready. Now we can go on to the next step. Second, animating. This is the part of the process where you animate all the scenes you included in your storyboard using Tupitoof. At this point, it's very important that you define an strategy for each scene of your project. How many layers are you going to use? Will you include an static background or a dynamic one? How many frames you will use? Are you going to use twins? So, for which elements? Those are some of the questions you should answer before starting to animate every scene. 
the case of the Game Boy project, six source files were created. I mean, every scene was animated in an independent source file. This is a good practice, because in that way you can deal with every scene without requesting too much memory to your computer, avoiding to lose your work because the video crashes. So remember this rule, create just one scene per file. Ok, let's take a look to one of the source files created by Jorge, the scene number 3. In this scene, the camera gets into the room's kit, generating a zoom-in effect. But let's take a look at the structure of the source file to find out the magic behind it. The source file only contains three layers. The first layer contains an image that defines the scene background. Now, to create the illusion that the camera is getting close, there is a scale twin attached to the image, so as I move forward to the timeline, the background gets bigger. What a trick! The second layer contains the couch behind the kit. This element has a position twin attached, so the only thing it does is to move down until it disappears. Now, this is the funny part. Combining the layers 1 and 2 gives you an interesting 3D effect of depth. Tell me if that's not cool. The third layer contains two lights to complement the scene, one for the window and one for the TV. Both elements have a position twin attached to them, to generate the same effect used at the first layer. As you can see, the final result of the scene looks really great, and it only lasts around 4 seconds. Another source file that I consider very interesting is the one containing the video game scene, because it mixes the stop motion technique with the frame by frame traditional approach. Let's take a look at it. This file contains 7 layers, but I want you to focus on the first one, which is pure stop motion. This layer is the base of the animation for this scene. The goal of the other layers is to complement the elements from the pictures but using 2D elements. For example, the layer 2 contains the border of the screen, and the layers 3 and 4 contains the titles at the beginning and the end of the scene. As a final outcome, the combination of all the layers produce a fun and cute representation of a classic video game. Personally, I love to experiment mixing different animation techniques, because from time to time you discover unexpected but amazing effects and tricks. Ok, let's say that you already animated all your scenes. Now it's time to transform every source file into a video from the sport module. As I mentioned in previous 2 tips, you just have to follow the wizard, selecting the format you want to use. Once you have the video files from all your scenes, it's time to go on to the next step. Third, editing video. This is the final part of the whole process and it consists in merging all the pieces of your story in just one video file. It's important to say that TubiTube is an animation tool, but not a video editor. So for this step, you will have to choose a complementary tool to produce the final version of your animated short. As I mentioned in previous TubiTips, there are a lot of options for different operating systems free and commercial, simple and complex, from Windows Movie Maker to Adobe Premiere. The list is pretty long. Anyway, I consider you have to make your own research and choose the option that fits better to your needs. The good news about video editors is that all of them have a pretty similar interface, as the goal of these kind of tools is the same allow you to compose a story from a bunch of video and audio pieces. But let's take a look at the basic workflow you have to follow when you edit your animation project. First, you have to import all the resources you want to include in your short. In our example, we have to import the video files of the six scenes. 
second, from the timeline of your video editor, you have to add all your scenes following the sequence you define in your storyboard. Usually, the timeline is composed by a set of tracks for video elements and other set of tracks to include all your resources, so you can distribute your scenes in different levels and adjust them easier. Third, import all the music and sound resources that you want to include as part of your project, in the same way you did it with your video elements. By the way, I recommend you to watch the Tubi Tip How to Add Audio to My Animations to get some handy tips about this part of the edition process. I will leave the link in the description of this video. 4. You can preview your project anytime, so you can adjust the position and the length of every element to your needs, until you get the perfect timing you were looking for between audio and video. 5. Once you have done your edition process, and your animated short looks great from the timeline of your video editor, it's time to export your project as a final video file. This procedure is also known as render, and is the last step you have to take to obtain your animation short. Depending on the number of elements and the length of your project, the render process can take a while. Ok, now that we have finished our project, it's time to share with you some final talks about this interesting exercise. Conclusions How much time takes to design and make an animated short? Of course, it depends on several variables. Some of them are The number of scenes The complexity of the animation, which means number of elements in the scenes, animation techniques, etc and the length of the project in seconds. Over time and a lot of practice, you will learn to calculate how much hours it will take to produce your animated shorts. In the case of the Game Boy project, these are the production numbers. Making the storyboard took 2 hours. Making all the 2D animation scenes took 5 hours. Making the stop motion scene took 4 hours and making the video edition took 4 hours for a total of 15 hours of work so more or less this project required at least 2 days of work full time to be done and it only lasts 48 seconds Yes, animation takes time but also it's a great resource to tell stories and explain any kind of stuff Ok, that's all for now, but before leaving, I want to say hi to some of our community members, like Tomarto, Vijoy, JXN, Ankai and Ims. Thank you for your messages. By the way, don't forget to like this stupid if, and please leave a comment telling me how do you plan your animation projects, and how long has been your bigger animation short. If you want me to create more tube tips like this one, please subscribe to my channel. This really inspires me to keep posting new content. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.